how the teacher and the listener should conclude a lecture together. At the end of a Dharma lecture, the teacher should dedicate the merits together with the listeners. What is dedicated is the various merits accumulated through teaching and listening to the Dharma. Where the dedication goes is the temporary and ultimate wishes. The mind of dedication is a strong aspiration. Dedication is a skillful means to transform merits. Through dedication, the accumulated merits can become vast and boundless. The strong aspiration for the temporary and ultimate wishes can make the merits vast and boundless. The author said that during dedication, we need to have a strong aspiration. If one mindlessly chants the dedication prayer, it's hard to transform the merits. When dedicating the merits, we need to have a strong aspiration. If we mindlessly chant the dedication prayer without aspiration, it will be barely effective or even ineffective. If you explain and listen to the teachings in such a manner, even for just one session, you will definitely receive the great benefits as mentioned in the scriptures. As Padmasambhava said, the merits of engaging in meditation retreat for nine years are not as great as the merits of turning the Dharma wheel once. You can see how great the merits of turning the Dharma wheel are. However, don't be greedy and think, then I will give Dharma teachings every day and not engage in meditation practice any more. If one properly teaches or listens to the Dharma, then all the negative karma created in the past, such as not respecting the Dharma and the teachers, will be purified. Moreover, one will stop creating such negative karma. Furthermore, by explaining and listening to the teachings in this manner, the teachings will benefit both the teacher and the listener. In general, after all the former excellent beings realized this, they practiced earnestly. In particular, the former gurus in the lineage of these instructions made very earnest and great effort in this activity. Earnest means they carefully followed the way of explaining and listening to the teachings. Therefore, it's important for you to learn it. In particular, those who teach the Dharma should meticulously follow it, and the benefits will be great. You can see that this is a very important teaching. You will not transform your mind without being certain about this. Without that certainty, no matter how extensively you explain the profound teachings, these very teachings often serve to assist your afflictions, like a helpful deity that becomes a demon. You should be careful that the Dharma may serve to assist your afflictions. We need to pay attention to this. Don't assume that the Dharma will definitely help you to eliminate afflictions. It's not necessarily true. The Dharma may become a factor that triggers your afflictions. For example, one hasn't developed a firm conviction of the way of listening to the Dharma, or doesn't contemplate the benefits of listening to the Dharma before the lecture starts, or doesn't show reverence to the Dharma and the teacher or fails to avoid the three faults and lacks the six recognitions while listening to the Dharma, or doesn't properly dedicate the merits at the end of the lecture. As a result, even after listening to the Dharma for many years, the teachings cannot touch their heart. 
This is because their attitude and conduct while listening to the Dharma don't align with the principles. If you cannot resonate with the teachings you hear, you should reflect on yourself and carefully examine where the problem lies. The Dharma is originally imparted for actual practice. If you treat it as mere knowledge instead of a method for practice, then it may become a factor that triggers afflictions, giving rise to afflictive and cognitive obscurations. In this case, the Dharma will turn into poison and a factor that triggers afflictions. As Dakpo Rinpoche said, if one doesn't practice the Dharma properly, it may cause one to be reborn in lower realms. This is possible. As the Flower Adornment Sutra states, when a cow drinks water, it becomes milk. When a snake drinks water, it becomes poison. Even if it's water or nectar, don't assume that when you drink the nectar, it must be nectar. When a snake drinks it, it becomes poison. We should be careful. Don't assume that listening to the Dharma is always beneficial. Sometimes, What you hear is the authentic Dharma, but due to your negative influences, it may become harmful. This is because when listening to the Dharma, one doesn't have a firm conviction of the right way of listening to the Dharma. This requires us to treat this matter very seriously. If one doesn't correct impure attitude and conduct when listening to the Dharma, then eventually they won't receive the benefits of listening to the Dharma. Some people attend a Buddhist academy just to obtain a diploma or get good scores. This is due to vanity and ego. Some people even seek a diploma in order to become the president of the Buddhist association in the future. They listen to the Dharma for the sake of pursuing a power. Such motives for listening to the Dharma are terrible. If one follows the right way of teaching and listening to the Dharma, even for just once, it will generate inconceivable merits. Ananda once asked the Buddha, What virtuous act yields the greatest merit? The Buddha replied, When one person teaches the Dharma and another person listens to it, it yields the greatest merit. So, don't be dissatisfied with small audience. If one person teaches the Dharma and another person listens to it, and the Dharma being taught is suitable for the listener's level of understanding, then the merit is the greatest. Ananda asked, What virtuous act yields the greatest merit? It is teaching the Dharma. If you teach the Dharma to someone and they practice it, then the merit is the greatest. Hence, the merits of teaching the Dharma are inconceivable. Consequently, it is said, If you mistake the date from the first day of the lunar month, The error lasts until the fifteenth day. Thus, those with intelligence should strive to explain and listen to the teachings in this manner. Moreover, they should have at least a portion of these qualifications every time they explain or listen to the teachings. Weary of excessive verbiage, I have condensed the most important points. If you mistake the date from the first day of the lunar month, the error lasts until the fifteenth day. This demonstrates the importance of the beginning. A good start is half the success. This is because if your direction is correct from the beginning, 
then things will be easier afterwards. On the contrary, if you start off with the wrong direction, like having issues with your car when you start driving, then you will run into trouble. Therefore, you should prepare everything well before driving. That's why the beginning is crucial. On the contrary, if one makes a mistake in the beginning, the mistake will continue, trapping oneself in a vicious cycle from which it is hard to break free. Initially, beginners should focus on cultivating the attitude and conduct for listening to the Dharma. Only when you have done this step well can you talk about future progress. If you don't even know the basic rules for listening to the Dharma, or know them but fail to implement them, then due to the lack of proper attitude and conduct in learning, you won't make any progress. It is stated very clearly here. Everyone should understand the right way of listening to the Dharma. His Holiness Jigmi Pank Sok Rinpoche once said, A higher level practitioner, upon hearing the sound of the conch, will immediately remind themselves, In order to benefit all sentient beings in the infinite universe, I shall generate Buddha Chitta and listen to the Dharma. A low level practitioner, at the very least, should generate Buddha Chitta when the Guru urges to do so before the teachings begin. His Holiness has prescribed that before Dharma teachings begin, we should chant the offering prayer and the seven preliminaries for purifying the mind of the practices and vows of Samanta Bhadra Buddhasattva, making the five offerings uninterruptedly, totaling 3,000 times. In other words, before listening to the Dharma, we need to make offerings. In principle, it's best to make offerings before listening to the Dharma. Many people make offerings after listening to the Dharma, which is less optimal. However, this is the situation. Some people don't have faith before listening to the Dharma but generate faith after listening. This is what they can do. There is nothing wrong with it. Anyway, the pattern is not fixed. If you spontaneously make offerings before listening to the Dharma, it indicates that you must have bodhicitta and faith from the beginning. Hence, you will benefit from listening to the Dharma from start to finish. On the other hand, some people have little faith in the beginning and just listen for fun. However, as they continue listening, they gradually develop faith. This also accumulates merit, but it may not be as much as half or even one third of the merit accumulated in the previous case. However, this is what they can do, and it is already quite good. So, we should make offerings from our heart. If you don't genuinely make offerings, if you're not willing to do so from the beginning, then such offerings are useless, equivalent to not making offerings at all. Therefore, it's best to have faith. If you have faith and make offerings from the beginning, you will certainly benefit the most from listening to the Dharma. It's similar to going to school. If one needs to pay tuition fees before attending school, one is more likely to study seriously. If there is no need to pay tuition fees, then many people might. Of course, some people will take it seriously and some won't. For example, if you are learning something and there's no need to pay tuition fees, Some people won't study seriously. After finishing the course, you can choose to pay tuition fees or not. 
Of course, there are also benefits to paying tuition fees after completing the course. The pattern is not fixed. So, for anything, there is no fixed pattern. Before listening to the Dharma, we need to make offerings. After that, chant the prayer of generating Buddha Chitta. Then, chant the prayer which magnetizes all that appears and exists, praying for the Dharma to flourish all over the world. After the Dharma teaching is completed, chant the latter part of the practices and vows of Samantha Buddha Buddhasattva to dedicate the merit of teaching and learning the Dharma. These practices help practitioners to follow the right way of listening to the Dharma. Since everyone understands these basic principles, I won't go into detail about them. I just gave a brief overview. Whether you are teaching or learning the Dharma, it's important to listen to this instruction. Otherwise, you might make many mistakes. It's pitiful if you don't study. Only after studying will you understand. Some people cannot remember the teachings even if they study, and that is unfortunate. For example, many people may have already forgotten what we have learned today. This shows that you don't value it enough. In such cases, you should earnestly review the lesson after class, listen to it several times more, and make sure to bear it in mind. In particular, monastics who propagate the Dharma should listen to it a few more times to remember it better. In this way, you will do better. Familiarize yourself with it a few more times. These are some principles that Dharma teachers should especially pay attention to. Alright, that's all for today's lecture.